Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to talk about uh, the SI system primarily. But I did want to start here with the slide on scientific notation, just kind of a reminder that um, this is a math skill. I expect you guys already to know how to do. So uh, a lot of times in chemistry, we have really big numbers and really small numbers you need to work with. So uh, you need to be comfortable taking these really small numbers or really big numbers and writing them in scientific notation or utilizing them in a math problem with scientific notation. If you're not comfortable with that, I do have a video lesson uh, prepared for you guys. You can go to to watch that to give you some background information on that. So uh, make sure you're comfortable with scientific notation. If not, go to that video lecture we find in our student files. All right, guys. So we're going to move on to this idea of System International, okay, or the SI system, okay. Um, most of you guys are probably familiar with calling it the metric system. And the metric system is actually an older version of the SI system. So the SI system uh, is something that's been agreed upon universally throughout the world, basically to be the system that we're going to use for measurements and weights and a uh, way to, to portray data for, for people. So a lot of times it's hard for us in our country because we have our common system, which comes from the imperial system, using feet and inches and ounces and pounds and that kind of stuff. And that's what we grew up and we learned um, as we were younger and our parents have and they learned. Um, so it makes it more challenging for a science uh, student in the United States because our base system of measurement does not match the rest of the world, which is really kind of tough. Um, however, we do want to talk about why we use this system and why it's actually a preferred system globally for what we use. So let's talk about the, big re the biggest reasons. Number one, we've agreed upon it, not only in the scientific community, but across business and agriculture and shipping and manufacturing, that that is our universal system. So people who do uh, commerce internationally use the SI system. So it may not be our one internally in our country, Country, but it is used globally. Number two, the root units are based on unchangeable standards. Okay, so what I mean by that is, if we talk about what is a meter, okay, a meter is defined by a very specific amount of time it takes light to pass through um, a vacuum. So that is, you know, unchangeable. So our, literally, our entire planet could go away, and we could relocate to a new planet, and we could still determine what a meter is on a new planet. Okay. Um, time is de de determined by uh, the radioactive decay of cesium. Um, so no matter where we are, if we can get our, heart, our hands on cesium, we can reestablish time no matter in any place in any location. So all of these measurements have been standardized to something that's unchanging and that will always be universal for us to, to access and reuse. Okay, So that's kind of a big deal for us. I mean, the old system, like the foot, comes from the king's foot, which would change every time you had a new king. That was crazy. Um, the next one we use, and this is one I think we all kind of agree upon, it's a base 10 system. So, you know, there's, you know, <clears throat> 100 centimeters in a meter. There is 10 millimeters in a centimeter. Um, and so everything is base 10, which is really easy to shift and adjust mathematically. Um, and it's really much easier to learn if you were learning it originally as you were growing up. Um, right now, we have like ounces, and so there's 16 ounces in a pound, but there's only eight fluid ounces in a pint, and there's four quarts to a gallon, and there's 5,280 feet to a mile. These are all very random, kind of weird numbers that have no rhyme or reason that we use. So having everything base 10 would be much, much easier for us. And finally, the prefixes are all the same between units. So this is something I really appreciate because if you think about it, if I have a kilogram, that means I have a thousand grams. If I have a kilometer, that means I have a thousand meters. If I have a kilo second, that means I have a thousand seconds. Okay. So the prefix kilo is used across all the different types of measurements. Um, you can have a kilonewton, you can have a kilomole, you can have a kilo of anything really, and it just needs a thousand of them. So um, having those prefixes the same is nice. It's actually less to learn. Okay. So those are our key things, and it's kind of the reason why we use it. Now, in our class and in all of science, really, um, we use that universally and that's the only system that we use is the international system now um for our course in particular there are some prefixes that i think you need to know well, these are ones that you should be able to pull from memory these are ones that you should be able to utilize and convert into convert out of without having to look them up without having to kind of work much with them so here's a chart to kind of help us out um so up here we have our prefix is kilo lowercase k is what was used with it and the value for kilo is a thousand 
So then I put in two examples for you to kind of give you an idea what that means by having a value of a thousand. So what that means on the first layer of examples, I've set everything up to equal one of that substance. So it's so it's a thousand meters for every kilometer. Okay. Um, another way of looking at it, it would be 0 0.001 of a kilogram would equal one gram. Or you could say the 0 0.001 of a kilometer is one meter. Okay. Um, so it's two ways of doing the conversion. They both work. Okay. Now, this is the only prefix we need in chemistry that's bigger than the root because most of the things that we deal with are very small. Um, in physics, you'll probably have more things like mega and giga and tera and that kind of stuff up there um, next year. The root, so we have things like grams and liters and meters and seconds um, in our roots because these are the, the base measurements that we're going to be using in our class. Okay, And yes, um, there really is, seconds is actually our base here. So we really don't talk about minutes and hours and days in the scientific community. We talk about kiloseconds or megaseconds or gigaseconds. Um, so if you go back to our root, it's all based off of the seconds actually in, in our system. You'll notice we have a lot that are smaller than the root. So these are ones that we use more in chemistry. So deci, okay, like a decimal, okay, in math class, if you're, what's your one decimal? That's where the deci prefix comes from. So that's a lowercase d. It's point one's our value. So a tenth of a meter is one decimeter, or there's 10 decimeters in one meter, or there's 10 decigrams in one gram, okay? Centi is, is point zero one. Okay. Sometimes people think centi is a hundred. Okay. Um, it is, but it's one one hundredth actually is what it is. It's broken down to a hundred pieces. So 0 0.01 of a meter is one centimeter, or you can have a hundred centigrams in a gram. Okay. Uh, milli is one one thousandths. So 0 0.001 meters to one millimeter. And then again, there's a thousand milligrams or a thousand millimeters in one gram or one meter. Micro is the only one that's kind of interesting because we have the Greek letter mu here that we use. It looks kind of like an italicized U that you put a kickstand on. So um, do your best to write that up. Um, if you're doing it in typeface font, if you just use a lowercase u, that's completely fine. You don't need to go find the Greek one if you don't want to. Um, this one we're now talking about something really small. So we're 10 to the negative 6 power in this. Or you have 10 to the 6 power of the micros for every 1 gram. And then finally, nano is one that we also use in here. So nano is times 10 to the negative ninth meters would equal one nanometer, or 10 to the ninth nanometers is one meter. Oops, that should be meters here because I use meters here and here. So I mess up my labels a little bit here. Okay. So these are prefixes that should you should be working with. We'll work with them in our class a little bit and as we do some practice stuff. But these are definitely ones that you should put to memory as we move forward. Okay. Now. One of our goals for this unit is to have a conceptual understanding of the SI system. So, okay, so things like when I say you have a gram of something, can you picture that? Or when I say you have a kilometer or a milliliter or there's two degrees Celsius change, can you picture what that means in your world? Okay, um, I would assume that if I say you have one pound, you're comfortable of kind of how much is a pound. Or if I say you walked two miles, you would kind of know what that meant. Or if I said you need to get three teaspoons of something, you have an idea of what those things are. Okay, um, Same thing for Celsius to Fahrenheit. So what we want to do is, is part of our lesson or the unit this year is to get more of an understanding of what it means to be a gram, a kilometer, a milliliter, and those kind of stuff. Okay, So basically, can you picture it? Or can you get a picture of what it should be or conceptually understand what it is so you can kind of make sense of the math you're doing and the answers that you're putting down? Okay, and we'll work on this in class a little bit more in terms of getting that idea um, <clears throat> as kind of an activity that we're going to be doing in class. Okay, all right, guys, we're going to end the video here. Uh, that's kind of end stuff on, on SI system. The next thing we're going to go into is error and measurement and how we can deal with measurement that way. Um, thank you.